Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and today I'm coming to you with another range report. And this range report is on a rifle I have been very interested in and wanting to shoot for a very long time. This is the Beretta ARX 100. This particular example is on loan to the channel from one of my local subscribers, Jack, and I'm honored and humbled that he trusts me enough to borrow this and put some rounds down range. This is one of the rifles kind of military heritage rifles in 5.56 that I do not personally own, but as I mentioned, I've always wanted to try to get my hands on and shoot, and today is that opportunity. So let's uh, put a magazine down range and see how I like this thing and what my initial thoughts and impressions are. So the first thing I'm noticing is that this is a very soft shooting rifle. I really like that. I was not expecting it. The gun looks kind of big. In fact, the kind of outer profile of it makes it look a little bit heavy and bulky, but it's actually really light. The recoil is extremely manageable. The other thing I seem to notice is that the distance between the face of the trigger and the back of the grip is extremely short, shorter than like your typical AR-15 or many other uh, firearms that I've shot. And I find that this is causing my finger to have to wrap around the trigger. I know that's bad trigger uh, technique, uh, but it's just kind of the way I'm having to shoot this thing. I'm having to slightly adjust my hands a little bit. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen when my wife gets a chance to shoot this and what she thinks. It might fit her hand a little bit more. But in general, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Let's see what the accuracy is. The target was at 25 yards. The optic I'm using is a sight mark, one that was provided by Jack that was already installed on the rifle. So I'm not 100% sure if it has been zeroed in. Let's see how we did it. 25 yards right here. So we get a very nice a group. As I said, the firearm was very easy to shoot, very easy to aim, and despite what it looks like, it's actually extremely ergonomic. I only had one flyer right there, and all of the other 19 rounds right there in the center of the target. Very happy with that. Let's load up some more magazines, and let's put some more rounds down range. Uh, could be the suppressor. Alright, so we're back here in the garage. I've had a little bit of time to formulate my thoughts on what I like and don't like about this rifle and what I guess my initial opinions of it are because I do think it has a lot of strengths and a couple of weaknesses. Now first 
And foremost, I want to thank Jack again for lending this to the channel for review. He's a local subscriber and has been so kind and has let me borrow a number of the firearms from his collection that I don't have, which I've been anxious to shoot. Speaking of being anxious to shoot, this is a gun that I have wanted to own and have in my collection for a long time, but that window of opportunity may have passed because I don't think Beretta is importing these anymore. It is my understanding that they still make them, but they're mainly marketed to the European marketplace more than the American marketplace as though these have not been good sellers, but I think I know why. But every review I have seen online of these always speak very highly of them, and I think many channels have said that this is one of the most underrated 5.56 modern sporting rifles out there. And after getting this to the range, being able to handle it, look at all the features, I have to say I completely agree. This rifle is awesome. Now, do I think that this is the greatest rifle ever made? It could, we could replace the M16 or the AR-15? No, I don't think that at all. But darn, is it a well thought out, well built, and well constructed rifle with a lot of features that I think makes this a very formidable option that could compete against the AR-15. But how did this thing shoot? Well, first off, it shot great. It looks like it's a big bulky rifle, and that's honestly why I don't think this rifle is as popular here in the United States as maybe other offerings from other companies. It just looks a little bit too different. The, the monolithic receiver looks bulky, it's big, it looks heavy, but it's really not that bad. It's, it's kind of an optical illusion. And I think a lot of people would look at this and go, wow, that, that gun's gonna kick. This thing is a very, very soft shooting rifle. Um, I think a little bit less so than a standard AR-15. It is heavier though, because obviously it does have the monolithic upper, but it's not too bad. I think from just, without actually weighing it and looking at the numbers, I wanna say that the HK MR556 and the FN SCAR 16S are both heavier than this. But this is supposed to be the Italian military's rifle, and it is a very modern design in that all of the controls are completely ambidextrous. You have sling attachments on both sides. You have lots of controls for releasing the magazines, uh, closing the bolt, and one of the coolest features, besides being able to take the charging handle from one side to the other, you can also make the gun eject either to the right or to the left. So depending if you're a right-handed shooter or a left-handed shooter, you don't have to worry about the spent casings when they're uh, ejected or extracted from hitting you in the face. I know that's uh, often a problem with left-handed shooters. Uh, when it comes to the AR-15, you don't have to worry about that with this gun. It's, it's easily switched with just the tip of a bullet. There's a little uh, tiny uh, little button inside the receiver that can change which extractor is activated when the gun is functioning. That is really, really cool. So this thing gives you a ton of options. As I said, you can change the charging handle from the left to the right. I like how Jack has this set up. I love charging handles on the left. I really do like that a lot. You have lots of controls for the magazine release, both uh, underneath, on the side, everything uh, is very close to your shooting finger. Now, one of the things that I don't like about this rifle, and I mentioned this in the shooting portion of the video, is that the distance between the front of the trigger and the back of the grip is extremely short. So it causes me to have to roll my finger through the trigger guard a little bit too much to get a sturdy grip on this rifle. So if I put just the pad of my finger right here, I, f I don't feel like I'm getting a lot of purchase on the grip. And I think that is kind of a detriment to the design. I wish that, that the trigger face was a little bit further forward. So when I pulled out an AR-15, uh, when I got home from the range to try to, try to compare, it definitely has a longer length. 
Um, I don't know what that particular length is called. I know the length of pull is from the back of the stock to the front of the trigger, but I, I don't know what you would call this length. I'm sure there's a name for it, and maybe somebody can tell me in the comment section below. But for me, that was uncomfortable. And even when my wife shot it, she commented on that. Now, of course, she has a lot smaller hands than I do. And for her, if you watch her shooting portion, she kept having to adjust her hand. She was trying to do it the right way by keeping the pad of her finger on the front of the trigger. But after shooting, because she wasn't getting a good grip because of that short distance, she was constantly having to readjust. So that's something that I think needs to be addressed. Now I do know that a lot of people do have smaller hands, but even my wife that has small hands, it was still too short for her. So maybe that could be lengthened up. I don't know if they offer any type of modification for that or if that can be adjusted or not. The stock is the other weak point of this gun. I can definitely tell that they're trying to draw inspiration from the SCAR 16 and 17 S stock. It folds and is adjustable and telescopic. And it kind of looks the same. It's just not as beefy looking. I think the stock is well constructed, but what I don't like about it is number one, it doesn't have a cheek riser, but secondly, the back of the stock is hard plastic. Now, this is a very soft shooting gun, so it doesn't really matter, it doesn't hurt your shoulder. But I do like to have a, a rubber uh, butt pad to my stocks. It just feels a little bit more comfortable and I don't have it slip as much. That was another thing that my wife had an issue with this. It kind of slipped on her shoulder. Now my wife is left eye dominant. So she's right-handed, but left eye dominant. So when she has to shoot rifles like this, it's a little bit of a struggle for her to try to use the optics. Uh, so sometimes she'll kind of turn the rifle a little bit to the side. She'll kind of cant it a little bit just so she can use her dominant eye. Uh, and then of course that affects the way it sits on her shoulder. And so if you have a stock like this, that yeah, it has a little bit of a textured surface on the back. If it doesn't have anything that's a little bit more grippy, it can slip and she's kind of struggled with that just a little bit. But it's a well-designed stock. I would just like to have a different butt pad on the back. Now, this also seemed to be extremely, extremely reliable. Uh, all of the casings that were ejected usually went to the three or the, even the two o'clock position. So I had a lot of casings kind of going forward. Uh, the, the ejections were very strong. I didn't have any failures to feed, any failures to eject. I know that this is gonna run standard M16 AR-15 magazines. It is my understanding though, that some of the PMAGs will not work. I guess some of them have a little ledge here on the back. And when it comes to this lower receiver, they won't fit in there right. But this particular one does. I uh, don't have any, have any issues with that. And this is the Gen 2, I think. Yeah, the Gen M2. Uh, some people, I think, said the Gen M3 are the ones that have uh, the issues. But the magazines that I took to the range, I had a steel and an aluminum and this particular PMAG, they all ran fine. So if you have any kind of odd, non-standard AR-15 magazines, I cannot guarantee that they will run in this, but all the ones that I used did. So, this thing was super accurate, it was low recoiling, it was just simply a lot of fun to shoot. And after getting to handle it, and knowing that it comes in this really cool color, yeah, I know a lot of you guys make a fun of me because I like the flat dark earth guns, sometimes you guys say I like the baby poop brown guns, but yeah, I like the color of this gun. So I may have to see if I can find a Beretta ARX 100 just like this thing and maybe pick it up for a good deal if I can find it. I don't, I don't think I would overpay for it. It's not a rifle that I am just antsy that I would go out and go, wow, I have to get this right now. But if I ever saw one for sale, I am not gonna hesitate picking it up if it is the right price. It is just a very nice, well thought out firearm. I'm very impressed with this offering from Beretta. And it truly is a shame that it did not get better attention and better traction here in the U.S. market. But it is a gun and a rifle that I am going to put on my short list to buy. So overall, I really enjoyed it. And I think if you're looking for a modern sporting rifle that's different than an M16, AR-15, uh, this is something that you might want to take a look at. I'll give you a couple of close-up shots here again of it. As I said, it's kind of weird looking. It's not as weird as the uh, FN uh, rifle. I forgot what that one was called. Uh, the one that they call the tactical tuna. 
but this one just has kind of a big, big old receiver to it. It just looks bulky, it looks impractical, but looks can be deceiving, and that's the case for this rifle. It is just a fantastic firearm. So, how would I rate it on my star chart? Well, I gotta say, it did exceed my expectations because I didn't think I would like it, to be honest with you. I was like, well, that's, that's a gun I've passed on. Uh, it looks a little bit, you know, big, but I gotta say all the other reviews I've heard of it are absolutely 100% true. I'm gonna give this rifle 4.75 stars out of five. I can't give it a perfect score because of the distance between the trigger and the back of the grip and the stock. Now, I know these things were probably uh, able to be adjusted. Uh, probably the stock, maybe there's other companies that make other options for this, but I really want what I want out of the box. But I don't know what can be done about this trigger. It's just too short. And so it caused me to have horrible trigger placement, trigger finger placement, I guess. But has rails every place that you would want it. Um, lots of places for optics, just super high quality, well built, well thought out, well engineered, ambidextrous completely. I mean, it is just one, one awesome rifle. So glad to have it uh, and have gotten to shoot it. So I unfortunately have to give it back to Jack this weekend and uh, he says well, he'll have something else cool for me to try out. So we'll see what he gives me. So, so there you go. The range report on the Breda ARX 100 in flat dark earth. Very impressed. And I guess I gotta get me one of these. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And do you guys own a Beretta ARX 100? And what do you guys think about it? So as always, thanks for watching.